Hi guys, it's Doc's Market Minute for Wednesday, September 2nd. Now, what we talked about yesterday is with yesterday's big plunge, okay, chances have increased that we'll probably not see the V bottom. So what we'll likely see instead is something where we're going to see many tests of not only the top of this range, which is right around the 2000 area on the S&P, as well as the bottom of this range. And I expect the bottom of this range actually to eventually be undercut, probably sometime in either the latter part of September or maybe mid by mid-October or so. Usually these things take about two months to really you know, fully mature and resolve themselves to one direction or the other. Now, ultimately, I do expect to see the prices go higher from this range for here. But that leads us into scenario number two or three, where as we rally, you know, we'll, we'll consolidate around this area for a while, eventually rally, and that is either going to lead to higher prices or this is going to lead to ultimately lower prices. So what happens over the next couple of months is just going to be irritating and aggravating to most investors because they're just not frankly skilled with range trading. But if you know what you're doing with options, you can certainly take advantage of this scenario. But what I'm really focused on is going to be what happens after this, because more than likely we'll do some kind of an undercut here, and then we'll see higher prices from there, at least temporarily. And then we'll see whether it resolves to the upside or the downside. If it's to the downside, this could be significant because we might be seeing a replay of what occurred back in 2008. Maybe not to that same degree, but the structure would be the same. And I believe ultimately we'd end up with an S&P value probably by sometime in early 2016, somewhere down near the 1600 area, which I think would represent an excellent value area and a much needed reset for the price to come back down to this area or so, okay, and, and really kind of split up this secular bowl into a couple of different cyclicals. So eventually we'll get some kind of some kind of recovery out of that and that begins cyclical bull number two if that occurs so this is my longer term vision if scenario number three works out otherwise what we could see is after this this noise and this undercut and everything like that we could just recover from there and go higher but i think the potential for a a move higher from there is going to be more limited versus seeing a deeper correction which causes more of that slingshot effect. It has more of the effect of pulling back the rubber band and then firing that slingshot. If you need any evidence of that, go back to 2009. Okay, so one thing I'd like to share with you that I shared with my premium subscribers last night was the number of daily advancers. And this is not something I see very often. Okay, so obviously with the S&P 500, we've got a number of stocks that are in any given day are going to be advancing versus declining. And that number doesn't necessarily add up to 500 because some of them will absolutely close flat on the day with absolutely no gains whatsoever. But the advancers plus the decliners plus the ones that go flat will always equate to 500. So now when we see extremes like this, so in the advancers, we had yesterday a closing value of 4. And over the last few years, if you go back and back test this, every time we've been below signal digits, and you can see this line that I've got illustrated here with 10, whenever we go down to single digits, the next day or so, within the next day or two, I would say, because we just saw this signal just about a week ago, right? Within a day or two, we see a pretty significant bounce. And so take that for what it's worth, is that I would expect to see a bounce from this signal sometime uh, within the next couple of days or so. Now it doesn't necessarily have to create a higher high. What we could be doing is just thrashing back inside this range and what ultimately what we'd be building is more of a symmetrical triangle similar to what we built up here. So this is what happens when energy comes into a market like this in a dramatic fashion is that we'll see it in what's called a dampening wave and a dampening wave like this and then from there once it coils up and has restored its energy again then we can either see the break up or in many cases we'll see a breakdown to undercut these lows 
So in the meantime, again, if you're nimble, you can see signals like this as a short-term entry, a very high probability short-term entry that you can take any number of ways to trade against this, especially with the elevated implied volatility. This would be better to sell something out of the money or maybe just even buy something like the SSO and not worry about the implied volatility crush as the, as the rally comes in and the VIX comes back in again. That's the thing with these types of corrections. It all of a sudden introduces an absolute ocean of opportunity if you're able to manage this. So you can make a tremendous amount of money during these periods of time if you're able to keep your head out of the news, if you're able to keep your bias out of your own trading and see the opportunities flowing by in both directions. Being nimble without a bias is so key towards surviving in today's market. That's it for today's Market Minute. Thanks for listening, folks. We'll see you tomorrow.